Holy Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I imagine with this gospel reading, you're expecting a sermon about how we need to take the gifts that God has given us, even if we don't recognize them, and put them at his disposal, and then we can see what wonderful deeds can be done, right? We've all heard it, right? You're awake, right? <laughs> you speak English, okay. Now, you're not gonna get that. That is a very clerical approach to this gospel passage because we're looking at Jesus and the apostles. But there is another group of players here that really gets ignored. Who are they? Who are they? Anybody? The people. The 5,000 men, or we presume that there were women and children with them, they really are the main actors in all of this. They need help right now. They're here and they really don't know what they're going to do to eat or to feed their children. They need help. To explain this to you, I'd like to tell you a little story about my girlfriend. Okay? Um, well, she was my girlfriend. Now she's probably just a little old lady. But when I was a junior in high school, I took a girl to the junior prom. Okay? And this was, so, and then after the junior prom, we went out to, to eat. And this was the day before credit cards. Didn't have credit cards, you had to have the money with you that you were going to uh, need for the dinner. We sat down at that table and she ordered everything and ate and ate and ate. And I'm sitting there, I don't know how much money I had in my pocket, but I was just worried I didn't have enough money and I had no idea what I was going to do. So I ate and just, I, I didn't order a little because I thought, well, I don't have enough, so whatever happens, happens. And then at the end of the meal, the waitress came over and uh, I asked for the check, not knowing what I was going to do, and the waitress said, the people over there took care of the meal. I guess they were parents of my father and my grandfather, but, but they paid for the meal. Do you realize how grateful I was to these people who came to my help? Who came to my help at that moment? From nowhere. I didn't even know where to go to ask. I didn't know what to do, but they helped me. Okay. I presume that Pam married somebody with lots of money who could feed her. Um, but in any case, I'd like to reflect on that. Today is my 39th anniversary of ordination to priesthood. Today. So, and I never thought I would be here. But it's an occasion for me to reflect upon vocation a little bit. All of you are in position of discerning your vocation. I am also in a position of discerning my vocation. What does the Lord want of me? Okay. Now, one of the mistakes we make in discernment is focusing on ourselves. What would make me happy in life? What do I need, what would I have to sacrifice? What am I called upon to sacrifice? Now you may say yes to all those things, I'm willing to do everything, but even if you're saying yes, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing, like with this gospel passage, on the apostles. Focus on the people who were fed that day. 5,000. How grateful they were, how much they needed Christ at that moment, and how much he did for them 
through the ministry of the apostles. There are people right now, right now, waiting for you, waiting for help. Some of them are so desperate, they don't even know they need the help. Some of them are so confused and so troubled, they don't even know where to go. So if you're discerning your vocation, don't focus on, well, what would make me happy? What do I want to do? Focus on what these people need, what the people you're going to encounter in life need. My liturgy today is not going to be for the intention of thanking God for my priesthood. It's not my priesthood. It's thanking God for all those people over the years I've been called upon to serve. And it's thanking God for all those people you young men are going to be called upon to serve over the next many years. One last and final thought because we are the multiplication of the loaves. And immediately when we think of multiplication of the loaves, what do we think about? The Eucharist. I want to give you one story that my first pastor told me. Now, my first pastor, God rest his soul, he was absolutely crazy. But he had a wonderful anecdote that I've been repeating for many, many years. He was in Lebanon. And a Muslim walked into his church and looked at the tabernacle. Okay. In those days, it wasn't hidden in the back. Uh, looked at the tabernacle and asked, well, what is that? And the priest said, well, inside of that is the consecrated bread. Well, what's that? Well, we believe that is the body of Christ. And the Muslim walked at him and said, you believe that's God? And the priest said, yes, we believe that's God. And the Muslim gentleman said, if we Muslims believed that God was present in that bread, we would lick the floor approaching the tabernacle. That is how much they appreciate this tremendous gift of the Eucharist. What a wonderful gift. Let's not take it casually. I don't think anyone in this group takes the Eucharist casually, but let's not take it for granted and understand and appreciate what a tremendous gift the Eucharist is and what a tremendous gift the priesthood is in enabling us to share that gift of God with his people. Father, Son, and 